Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Art with Miss Maureen. It's great to see you, even though I can't see you. Um, I hope everybody is staying safe and healthy and enjoying their time with their family. Um, today we're going to be doing an Easter Bunny. You're only going to need a few simple materials. Watercolor paper, this is the brand that I use at the studio. A pencil. A Sharpie or any permanent marker. A paintbrush, a set of watercolors. I'm just using the Crayola Kids brand. If you don't have watercolors, you can actually take food coloring and put it in a bowl and dilute it with a little bit of water. I like to have a paper towel on hand and a water bucket. This is an old ice cream container. Cool Whip containers make great water buckets as well. So I'm gonna show you two versions of drawing the rabbit today. One that is great if you are preschool or kindergarten, and the other one if you are a little, or, or in first grade or older. The whole family can do this rabbit. Fun to actually do a whole family of rabbits. So I'm gonna just do the simpler version for the preschool and kindergartners. You will probably wanna be doing the step in pencil. That way, if you wanna change anything, you still can. Can't really see pencil very well on camera, so I'm gonna do mine in magic marker. So I'm gonna start a little bit below the middle because I know I have to fit my entire head in and I have to fit some big ears in. So I don't wanna to go too high when I start. So, so here's the middle and I'm gonna go down a couple inches. And I'm just gonna start with a simple triangle shape for the nose. I'm gonna come down from that with a little line. And I want you to envision big, puffy rabbit cheeks. So there is one cheek. There is another cheek. Don't worry if they're not exactly the same. My feet aren't exactly the same size. One's, it's actually about a half a size difference. So now I'm gonna make kind of a half of an oval shape. And I'm gonna show you a straight ear and a bent ear. On the other one, I'm just gonna show you two straight ears. So if you wanna do the bent ear on your other one, you're welcome to. So the ear shape is a lot like a leaf. You see how it looks like a leaf? Also looks like a deflated football. So I like to kind of come all the way out to where my ear is going to be and do a little dot so I know how big it's going to be. It helps you to not make an ear that's too tiny because one of the really cool things about rabbits, I think, is their big floppy ears. When I do my ears, you see how there's a little bit of space there? They don't come to a point because it should look like it's on the rabbit's head. If it comes to a point, it kind of looks like it's dangling on his head. So for the, the bent ear, you're going to draw a line. It's halfway up and then not quite halfway up. So the one on the outside, or excuse me, the one on the inside is the longest line. From that line, I'm gonna make a point. And then from that point, I'm gonna curve in and overlap that line a little bit. To draw the inside of my rabbit ears, on this one, I'm just gonna draw a pointed leaf shape and on this side, I'm just gonna draw a half of a point. And then I'm gonna make my rabbit's body. I could make it a tall, skinny body. I could make it a wide, fluffy rabbit. Let's go for really fluffy today. You can draw your eyes any way you want. You can just do tiny little circles. You could draw, where's my scrap paper? I have a, some students that really like to draw animals and they actually develop their own ways of making eyes. So if you have your own way of making eyes, there's one way, kind of half circles. I like to always leave a little bit of a highlight to kind of bring the eyes to life. You can just do circles or ovals and again, leave that highlight. If you wanna make him look like he's kind of got a little bit of a cheek or puff underneath his eye, you can do that. You could even add little lashes. So the eyes kind of tell the story of your character. So go ahead and 
practice if you want and figure out the best way that you want to make your eyes. So I'm going to put my eyes all the way on the side like a rabbit would be. I think I'll just do ovals again like I did in my first one. And then I'm going to do some whiskers. I like to put the pen, the marker down and then kind of whisk it out. I don't do the whiskers in pencil. I think they're better to do right marker because it's kind of hard to go over those again. So you can see how I press down, drag it and lift. Press down and kind of flick it. Kind of like you're saying there's an ant on the paper and you want to get rid of that ant or that stink bug and just kind of flick it off. And that gives you cute wispy whiskers. So there is my rabbit that I said was great if you want to keep it simple. Great for preschool or for kindergarten. And this one is just a little bit, has a little bit more detail. So it's the same thing. I'm going to start with a, tri a triangle. Again, the nose can be big or small and that is one of the things that gives your rabbit character. And that's what makes it fun, is that everybody's gets to look different. So I tilted my nose a little bit. I don't know if you can see that, but it is slightly tilted. And then this time I'm gonna take my cheeks from here, but I'm gonna wrap it right into the corner of my nose. And then I'm going to create the same half of an oval but I'm gonna create a little bit of a bridge of the nose. And then on the side again, I'm gonna go ahead and put my eyes. I think this time I'll add some lashes. What's everybody's favorite Easter candy to get? Mine is chocolate. Anything chocolate. And every Easter, I'm doing the same leaf shape I did in the first rabbit. I'm gonna repeat it. Every Easter, I make my family's recipe for peanut butter eggs and buttercream eggs. When I was a kid, we got to come home from church and dip the eggs. <coughs> that was always a family fun day, dipping and eating the chocolate eggs and the buttercream or the peanut butter eggs and the buttercream eggs. My mom made coconut eggs uh, my family's not a real big coconut fan. They're not coconut fans, so. If you wanted to, if you didn't want your lines to be perfectly straight, I had the kids in class last year when we did these make them a little bit furry, like that. When you do fur, let me just draw an outline in pencil. Let me show you what not to do. What you don't want to do with fur, if this were the outline, is draw straight out. It makes it look like your rabbit's really scared and all the hair is standing up. What you want to do is kind of lay it down and don't go too heavy. You might even want to look for a thinner permanent marker, like a thin Sharpie. Or if you have a Micron pen. Something that's waterproof. So I just kind of make little hairs that kind of lay down. So that's another option for you. And that gave him a little bit of a furry type of texture. So I had flowers in my rabbit. You could also draw a bow tie on your rabbit. That would be fun. I love to put flowers in my, on my characters. So I'm just drawing a couple simple flowers. Maybe this one's a little bit of a rose, a couple of little leaves. And now my rabbit's ready for paint. So the most important ingredient in watercolor is water. So if you don't have enough water on your brush, the paint kind of drags and it's kind of sticky. If it's sticky, it will actually never dry because watercolor is concentrated like Campbell soup. You have to add water to it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my brush. I like to do the face in a light color. It doesn't have to be yellow but it should be light. So um, look at your watercolors. This pink, this pale pink, uh, purple would work, this pale yellowy orange or this yellow or even this pink I could add some enough water to to make it light. I'm gonna stick with the yellow that I did. 
So for the face, I'm just going to paint it straight with watercolor. I'm not gonna pre-wet my area. I'm gonna pre-wet some other areas that are bigger. So I'm just painting in all of this. Notice every time I, before I get my paint, I get water. So water and then paint. Don't load it up so much that you have puddles and that the paint is gonna run because then you spend a lot of your time just kind of mopping up the paint that kind of went where you didn't want it to go. So I did get a little bit of paint out of my whisker. I don't pick it up with a paper towel. I actually take a, my paintbrush and I dry it really well. And then I just carefully use my paintbrush to kind of pick up that paint where I didn't want it. Now, I want my cheeks to be a little bit brighter in the center here, like there's a highlight. So I am gonna use my paper towel for this. I'm gonna kind of scrunch it up and I'm just gonna kind of press and pick up some of that paint so it's a little bit lighter. So if you know me, I love color and I hardly ever leave anything just one color. So I'm gonna drop in another color. Colors that mix well with yellow are orange, red, or pink. If I add blue, it will mix okay, but I'm gonna get a new color. Does anybody know what that color is? Yes, it is green. And I really don't want my rabbit's face to have green in it. I'm just taking a little bit of a damp brush and removing some of this paint because I just want a hint of that pink. I don't want a ton of it. And I'm gonna take a little bit of a light orangey color and just kind of put that on the bridge of the nose. Not too dark because I think I'm gonna paint my nose orange this time instead of pink. And maybe I'll take a little bit of that pink and just put just little dots of it here and there and then add a little bit of water to help spread it. Just to add a little bit of interest in color. So those of you who take class with me know that you don't want to paint wet paint next to wet paint because all the colors will run together. So I would advise you to kind of hop around. So now would be a good time for me to do the insides of the ears because they're not touching anything. So I think I'll do those purple. Feeling purpley today, I don't know why. Do you wake up and you have moods where you're like, oh, I'm in a red mood, oh, I'm in a blue mood. I wake up and I, I'm in color moods. I actually have my clothes arranged by color. All of my reds together, all of my yellows. I'm gonna take a little bit of blue because I know blue and purple mix together well. And I'm just gonna drop that in. Again, just little bits here and there. If it's too dark, I think that's a little dark, I'm just gonna take a little bit of a damp brush and just kind of pat it and blend it in a little bit. Notice I'm not painting over the whole thing. If I did, the whole thing would be one mixture of that color. And I don't want that. I like how the colors are just kind of spotted here and there. I think that's a really fun approach. But this is your art. You can do it any way you want. So I'm gonna come down now to the body. If you look at my first one, you can see that there's a whole rainbow of colors there. So the best way to do that is to actually just take plain water first and wet your entire rabbit's body. Don't drown it. It's not the ocean. Just get it shiny and wet. You can kind of tilt your head and see where the water is. See if you missed a spot. Then you're gonna take your watercolors. Let's see what colors haven't I used. I haven't used any green yet. Why don't we use a little bit of this lime green? And you can take your colors and just drop them in. <coughs> I'm just kind of putting them here and there. This is my green. It doesn't look as dark as I want it. So I'm going to actually add a little green on top of it to kind of make my own green because I don't think it was, wasn't really the green I had in mind. I know blue and green mix well together. So I can put a little bit of blue in with that. A lot of colors 
if, if you mix too many colors together or colors that aren't similar to each other, you end up with brown. So purple and yellow, see they're very different. If you mix those together, you'll end up with brown. I'm gonna add a little bit of purple down here because I know that mixes with the blue. I haven't watched Hop yet. That's one of my favorite Easter movies. I think that's so funny. You know, the one I mean, it's uh, part, I don't know that it's really animated, but there's a real person and then there's that rabbit that's kind of a, I don't know what, but it's a, it's a really funny movie. So do you see how there's a big area of green there? I wanna break that up just a little bit because to me it's not as interesting when there's just too many big Area. So I'm just dropping a little bit of blue on. And later on, if I find that this isn't dark enough, I could add some more color and make it a little bit darker. When I think of Easter, I think of pastel colors. So I'm gonna keep mine kind of light. Now my orange looks very orange here on my palette, but when I paint it, it's very light. So to make orange a little bit darker, does anybody know what color I should add? You said red, and you picked the right color. So I'm just gonna turn add a little red because I want my nose to be darker so it kind of stands out against the face. If it was too light, I don't think you'd be able to see it. I'm just gonna use a little bit of that while it's on my brush to paint in these flowers. I don't really use much pink, so why don't I do a little pink petals and maybe a blue rose. I don't know if there's blue roses out there. Probably not. Unless you spray painted them, but that's okay. If you're looking at my rabbit, you can tell it's not really using real colors, am I? And that's the fun about being an artist. So because this is all wet, I'm going to turn my rabbit upside down because I tend to lean my hand on my paper. And if I do that right now, I'm going to ruin everything that I just did. I always tell my students there are no upside down police. So you can turn it sideways, you can turn it upside down, turn it at the angle that is easiest for your hand to get to so that you're not twisting your arm in really funny angles trying to get to it. So I am wetting the ear because, does anybody remember? Because I want my colors to just blend together. And I'm gonna try to not use a lot of, I don't think I'm gonna use any pink in the ear, on the outside of the ear, because I used it on the inside. So now I'm looking for different colors so that the inside and the outside are different. And that way they'll, the design shows up. My little oval doesn't disappear like camouflage. So again, I'm just kind of spotting in that color. On the other ear, I'm gonna use just water again. Now, if I were you, I would probably wait until this flower and leaf thing dried. But you probably don't wanna sit here and watch paint dry. As exciting as that sounds, we're gonna just be careful. But you're gonna have a little bit more time. You can take a snack break. You can pause the video, go have an apple or an orange or a cheese stick or raid the pantry because maybe you're out of fresh fruit now and nobody wants to go to the grocery store. So again, I'm just adding a little bit of that orange to fill in my ear. Now on mine, I added some splatters. So if your parents are listening, I want you to not do the splatters at the kitchen table. If you have a big box, you can put it in a box, even a plastic box. Maybe you're cleaning out your winter and getting your spring clothes out. Maybe your parents would let you use a box like that. Or if it's nice out, go outside and do this step. Get some fresh air and have some fun with the splattering. So notice that my splatters don't take over. It doesn't look like a can of paint fell on my rabbit. It's just a little bit of color. You don't have to do splatters, by the way, if you wanted to paint polka dots, or if you wanted to paint flowers, or if you wanted to let this completely dry 
and paint in your whole background, you could do that too. You could draw a line there for the sky and the ground and paint that in, whatever you wanna do. I'm gonna show you how I did the splatters. I'm just gonna take my paintbrush and I'm just gonna get a nice amount of water on my paintbrush and swirl all the sides of my paintbrush on. You see how I'm kind of swirling it in there? I'm not splattering over my rabbit because I like the way it looks. I don't want splatter to get on it. So I'm gonna put one finger out and I'm just going to tap very gently around the edges. You see how low I am? I'm not six feet up because if you're six feet up, you're going to be the one splattered and not your rabbit. So I just gently tap. When I wanna change colors, rinse your brush. Get a nice amount of color on there, swirl your brush around and tap slowly and carefully and not on the kitchen table. Get a box or go outside. I'm gonna do one more color, a little pink, because what's Easter without a little bit of pink? And then my cutie patootie rabbit is all finished. So they're colorful and they're fun. If you liked my lessons, I have some lessons in bundles that you can buy. One is called Down on the Farm. There's three projects you're gonna do. You're gonna do this uh, cute piggy collage. I'm gonna show you, teach you some ways to make flowers, way to make a really cool scraped background, how to paint and draw a piggy. I'm also gonna teach you a cow. And we're gonna make silly rooster hats or you can make it any animal that you want. For grown-ups or teens or even kids that are in middle school, I have a watercolor cactus tutorial also on my website that you can buy. This one's just $6. Your whole quarantine family can do it. Um, this is just a half of it, nine by 12, which would make that uh, six by, I can't, I can't do the math out of my head right now. I should have figured that out. But I took my pack that I had earlier and I just cut my paper in half to make this. And again, I just use this set of watercolors and a Sharpie, so nothing fancy. And this one, I teach you how to draw three different types of cactuses, and then you can put it together in any kind of composition that you want. So please consider some of the awesome tutorials I have for sale, and I'll be adding some more, hopefully, in the next couple of weeks as quarantine continues. Thanks for tuning in. Check out my Facebook page, MaureenMarksArt.com, and I will see you the next time. Happy Easter.